from the Digital Media Center on the campus of Southern Oregon University in Ashland, Oregon. This is Ramping Up Your English, an educational program for intermediate level English language learners. Here's your host for Ramping Up Your English, John Letts. Welcome to Ramping Up Your English. Winner of the 2017 Southern Oregon Television Award for Program of the Year and the Best Education Show. Ramping Up Your English is an educational support program for intermediate English learners. It's a program for people from all language backgrounds. Ramping Up Your English is also for people of all ages. If you've already passed the beginning stages of learning English and want to reach higher levels of proficiency, this program is designed to meet your needs. We take a content-based approach to helping you reach higher levels of English proficiency. Our current thematic unit is Animals. This is segment one of episode 76. In our last episode, we completed most of the final review for viewers to compose a report on the animal of their choice. Now, if you finished your report, I suggest you attach it to an email and send it to my email address. That address is Let's create pro at gmail.com. Put animal report in the subject line. And if you'd like any specific feedback or just want me to give you general thing for your email, general response, I'll be happy to do that. Now, our last episode also featured the exciting cycle of the little blue heron from an egg through important stages to maturity. Now, these images came from Susan Rouye of Mobile, Alabama. Susan is a retired teacher and an avid bird watcher, a true birder. She lives on Mobile Bay Delta, where she sees the richness of the avian life world, including bird migrations. So this episode is named Love of Animals, it's the love of birds and nature that sends some people to all parts of the world. Let's watch that Skype interview that we had earlier today. So Susan, thank you for being with us today. Uh, we're first going to talk about that Mobile Bay Delta. And I understand that it's sometimes called the American Amazon what can yes. you tell us about this special place? Well, it is very special. It's a national treasure. It's the second largest delta in the United States, and it covers, uh, it's made of five rivers that drain pretty much the whole state of Alabama with the riverlets, and they uh, drain all the way down to uh, Mobile Bay, and uh, it's just a super rich, biodiverse area. I think I've heard it, I've read that it's the most biodiverse in the whole country. Wow. Well, I understand there's, there's quite a bit of natural processes involved in that. Now, uh, how long have you had an interest in this Delta area? I, uh, about six or seven years when I retired, I spent so much of my life not knowing all the beauty that was out there, all the all the bird life and plant life and animal life. So it's, it's almost like being a child again to go and discover. And how do you get access to this area? I, I know that there's, there's alligators swimming in the water and all kinds of things going on. It's fairly remote, isn't it? Yes, yes. Well, uh, you have to go by boat, mostly. So I, you can go in a kayak um, and you can go in a pontoon boat. But then there are piers here and there where you can uh, walk along the edge. And in some of the parks, you can go out uh, on long piers and see, see um, birds and other creatures. So it is available uh, to the public. It's accessible. In some ways, in some places. There, there's a, a, a boat that launches every day, takes people in the delta, but not too far up in the delta. Now, Maybe we have this great picture of you in a kayak, 
And I know from being in a kayak, you're not far from the surface of the water. And I know that there are alligators swimming around in there. Does that ever uh, bother you? Um, not really. I, I see them occasionally, but I stay away. Um, uh, I have not had any trouble with snakes. I had a frog jump in the boat one time, and a fish jumped right in the boat. Um, that must have been fun. But I, um, I'm not afraid of snakes because um, I read that there are only 14 people who die of snake bites per year in the United States, so I don't worry. Yeah. Well, uh, it's a shame that some people, they're probably safer out in nature than they would be anywhere else, and yet they have these fears that keep them from going. Yes. Now, uh, what are some of the favorite birds that you've encountered out there in the uh, Mobile Bay Delta? One of my favorites are the ibis. The ibis, I fell in love with those when I saw these long Vs of undulating ribbons of beautiful white birds. And they came every afternoon all the way down the bay, and they are stunning to see. So they were a first love, but uh, there's so many uh, birds that around there. All, I've photographed all the herons, the great blue, the little blue, the green heron, um, the tricolor heron, and the smallest heron even, which is very rare to see, is the least bittern. Uh, I've photographed rookeries of these birds. I try to find um, babies, but I, I'm very respectful and keep my distance, so I have uh, long lenses, so I don't disturb anything. Well, you have gotten some stunning images of birds from there, uh, and I've seen some of the equipment you use, which I, th I think is, is uh, pretty fascinating. Now, um, you, I understand that you have a Facebook page, and people can go on and see the bird of the day. Yes, I decided um, I, I could put something nice into the universe and put one picture per day of a bird. So... Um, Instead of politics or other topics, I only put one bird a day, and I've been doing it for four years. And um, if I don't post the bird of the day, people call me and say, "Are you all right?" <laughs> That's great. Now so, uh, I understand you. You are, of course, quite a birder, as they say, a, a bird watcher. Uh, what's the farthest you've traveled to see or photograph a bird? Um. I've been to Costa Rica twice and Panama once, and I'm going to Ecuador in September. And then in January, I'm going to Australia. Wow. So that, I guess Australia will be the farthest. You're, you're willing to travel. I uh, uh, recently saw an Australian bird, but it was in a wildlife park. Just not the same experience, I know. Um, now, you have written a book that you've published uh, about that area. Can you tell me a little bit about that? I can. It's, a, it's about the region of South Mobile from Brookley Field to Dog River. And it's an area that's 300 years old, has 300 years of history, dating back to where the, uh, the first French settlement was in the New World, was right here, wow. right, French. right down the road. Yes, yes. It was, it was the very first settlement, and um, it's as important as Jamestown, Virginia was for the English. And it was, the warehouse was just a mile away from here, and uh, that was the center of ac the activity in the New World. So it's, it's a very important area. Um, so it hasn't been written about as a collection ever, because it, this area was only annexed to the city uh, in 1956, so the records weren't all gathered. So I spent six years uh, gathering information and writing this book, and it's been selling at, it's been at the top 1% of Amazon sales so, since it was released in uh, June. That's phenomenal. Susan, know, thank you very to... much for uh, joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. And now we're uh, back to uh, thank, thanking everyone for watching and see you next time.
Today's episode is named Love of Animals, and it's the love of birds and nature that sends some people to all parts of the world just to get a look or a photograph of uncommon birds. Now, learning about these special places in southern Alabama brings us to the end of segment one of Ramping Up Your English.